In this video, we'll be talking about Campylobacter jejuni. This is a high yield video for USMLE step one. Stay tuned till the end. Campylobacter jejuni is a microbacterium associated with gut problems or dysentery. Campylo stands for curved and jejuni stands for jejunum, which is a part of the intestine. So obviously, Campylobacter is associated with some kind of intestinal distress. Campylobacter jejuni is gram negative, curved S shaped rod. They have single polar flagellum, which helps them to do a characteristic dart-like motion. And they are microaerophilic. They do not form in carbohydrates and they can be cultured on selective medium. Campylobacter jejuni is one of the most common causes of food poisoning along with their friends Salmonella, Shigella and Clostridium perfringens. So in US it's pretty much prevalent and it's also prevalent in other uh, parts of the world. So in this video, we'll look at the microbiology, pathology, identification, and finally, the treatment of Campylobacter jejuni. So let's talk about the microbiology. So Campylobacter jejuni has a characteristic uh, kind of screw shaped or S shaped kind of uh, structure. They are gram negative. So obviously they can be identified using gram staining and they have that characteristic shape under the microscope. So they are oxidase positive, catalase positive, and they are microaerophilic. This is typical about them because they need low oxygen environment for optimal growth. So this is how the Campylobacter jejuni looks like. They have Amphotrichus flagella, that means a single, single polar flagellum, which provides the organism the capability of a dart-like motion. But why this motion is important? Because this kind of motion would allow them to wade through the thick mucus in the intestine and ultimately they can affect the uh, intestinal cells. So when it comes to pathology, let me tell you this bacteria has several kind of modifications on their uh, lipids in the membrane and also the proteins present on the outer membrane. So they have lipo oligosaccharide sialation kind of modification they have capsular polysaccharides and several proteins are n-linked glycosylated all these modifications are kind of determined or detected by pattern recognition receptors present in phagocytes like dendritic cells or let's say macrophages so these kind of uh, patterns are recognized by these cells and presented to a t helper cell this interaction lead the differentiation of T helper cell into Th1 subtype. This Th1 subtype produce pro-inflammatory cytokine which evokes inflammation. And this is associated with Campylobacter jejuni infection. So there is infl inflammation involved. Also, the T helper cell now activates B cells. These B cells are now activated and they generate antibodies against that particular antigens presented to those T cells. These antibodies can eventually attack the myelin sheath of peripheral neurons. They can affect the neurons. How is that? Because in the peripheral nervous system, in, in basically the neurons have specific kind of antigens displaced on their membrane. And these are basically lipids such as GM1, GD1, etc. These are enriched in, this kind of gangliosides are pretty much enriched in peripheral nervous system. These antibodies can cross react with these gangliosides. And this is kind of an example of molecular mimicry. Obviously, these antibodies cannot detect the Campylobacter. Instead, it affects the peripheral nervous system, which is super bad. Now, it can basically uh, lead to complement fixation and complement fixation lead to membrane attack complex and damage to the neuron. So what we can see the moral of the story is the peripheral nervous system neurons are actually damaged. That is associated with Guillain barre syndrome. This is an acute rapidly progressive demyelinating disorder which is thought to be autoimmune in nature and it affects the peripheral nerves and now we know why. It's also known as a uh, inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy or AIDP and then it is usually caused by Campylobacter of course but alongside that there could be viral infection like Epstein-Barr virus cytomegalovirus can cause this or sometimes it could be a side effect of influenza vaccine though it's rare but anyway Campylobacter jejuni uh, is 
pathologically associated with the gullian barre syndrome. That's super important. And then mode of transmission involves, it can be uh, transmitted via contaminated food or water. Eventually, the fecal oral route is a common mode of transmission for many of these bacteria. Then transmission of Campylobacter can also occur via consumption of unpasteurized milk, raw meat, or contact with the poultry animals which are infected. Lab identification can be done on basis of uh, culturing samples from stool and doing gram staining. So the characteristic uh, S-shaped structure with flagella can be partially visualized in the uh, microscopic fields and it can be selectively isolated and grown on culture with the help of modified charcoal uh, cefoperazone deoxycolate agar this is a selective agar plate which has uh, which contains charcoal so it appears black and the colonies look like this when it comes to treatment it's a bacterial disease so obviously it can cause basically uh, it can be treated with antibiotics like azithromycin or fluoroquinolones so in the in this case since it caused dysentery there would be a lot of uh, fluid loss so replenishing body fluid and electrolytes is necessary in case of extreme dehydration there could be hospitalization and iv fluids but it's a treatable disease i hope this was useful and if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to follow us on facebook or instagram all the links are provided in description you can support us using super thanks. See you in next video.